Hi, this is David at Mash IT. Now, if you've been following the channel, you know that we've been loving our Anywhere X17. It's been one of my favorite laptops of this year. And I've been using my X17, which I bought myself with a 3080 for myself to use with a 34 inch ultra wide. And I've been really enjoying that experience. But Dell recently had an offer on the Anywhere 38 inch AW3821DW. Now this is a really expensive monitor, but it's something that I've really lusted after for a while. So when I saw the special offer come up on Dell, I picked one up with a discount voucher, and here it is in the studio, dwarfing pretty much the entire desk. So this video, what we want to do is I want to show you my ideal desk setup with my Anywhere X17 and my new monitor that I'm using, the Anywhere 3821DW, how I connect all the peripherals, and then I'm going to see how it copes gaming with the 3080 on my Anywhere X17, and whether this laptop can push the massive amount of pixels in this 38 inch ultra wide monitor. So before we do that, before we look at the actual performance, what I'm gonna do is talk you through what we're using in this setup. This is like my desk setup. I've moved it away from my desk because my desk is a real mess. So in the studio, this is how I run it. Firstly, I've got my Anywhere X17, and this is normally open, but obviously with me behind, I wanted to close it so you could see. We'll open it up when I'm shooting in a minute. But this is running, and I'll usually have my Discord and a few other bits and pieces on this screen. And so I use this on a monitor arm. And this is just quite a cheap aluminium folding mount, but it's great because what it does is it lifts the laptop up a little bit, which gives me more airflow under the X17, and also puts the screen at a better height with the monitor, which you'll see in a second. Now to connect all the equipment I use on my desk together, I'm using a Display Matters DisplayPort little dock. Now this plugs into my USB-C, and it has a display port, full size display port, two USB 3 ports, and an Ethernet port. I can plug all of my cables into this one little dock that goes into a USB C port. So I've got one cable plus my power cable, and I'm all set up, ready to go. That's something I absolutely love. So then that obviously display port goes into my Alienware, my 38 inch, which then goes via the actual alternate display port of USB C. So I still get my G Sync, and I still get my 144 Hertz 3840 by 1600 display resolution. Now the reason I chose this 38 inch ultra wide is not only is it a fantastic size screen which is great for gaming, but obviously I'll be using this for work as well. I like to be able to use my machine for gaming and for the actual video editing I do on the channel. The great thing with this machine is not only has it got advanced G-Sync for the display port, but you've also got HDMI 2, which the older 34 inch didn't have. It had just an older HDMI 1.4, which meant you couldn't get the full resolution at 60 Hertz on that 34 inch panel. That's not the case with this 38 inch. Through the HDMI ports, you can still get the full 3840 by 1600 at 60 hertz, which is really quite impressive. Also with this monitor, you get the amazing Alienware RGB on the back of the screen. You get the alien head and the, like, the lit bar. You can change the color of those in the monitor itself or in the Alienware command center. You've also got a nice four port USB hub built in, which you can put that through and then plug peripherals into the actual bottom of the screen itself. That can be very useful if you've got a headset or a mouse you want to plug into the monitor. And also the stand has got a lot of versatility. You know, you can move the height up and down, you can pivot it forward and side to side, which is really great. The only thing you haven't got is much rotation. You can just literally level it up and that's about it. With the 27 and 25 inch, you can actually pivot them 90 degrees, which you can't do with the ultra wide, but that is because they are so wide, they wouldn't be able to pivot anyway. Now, obviously as well, driving this such a high resolution, this has got the advanced G-Sync. So if you're not able to push those particularly high frames per second, which in a lot of the AAA titles you're not gonna be able to with this screen, you can use the advanced G-Sync to keep it really smooth. And it is a proper dedicated advanced G-Sync chip in the monitor, and you get great performance with that. And I do love it if I'm not pushing over 100 frames per second like I do with a, a smaller screen. I've also got my Razer mouse and my mechanical keyboard all plugged in to this one little dock. Now the mouse and keyboard I'm using is a Razer Viper Ultimate and that's a wireless mouse. I've got it in there, sort of the white color. And the reason I've done that is just literally to match the setup so it looks pretty similar, you know, with the, the sort of the white of the Anywhere and the monitor. And I've done the same with the keyboard. I have bought the Keymove Arctic Snow Fox, I think it's called. I'm gonna put the link in the description down below. And it's a mechanical keyboard in a 60%. It works really well and it doesn't take up much desk space. So obviously where I've got this much stuff on my desk, I wanna keep the clutter to a minimum. So I have a nice small mechanical keyboard and I use a red switch because I think it's great for gaming. And I even enjoy typing on a decent red switch keyboard. Now the lovely thing about this Keymove is it's quite a good price for a mechanical keyboard but it's got a lot of features built in there. It's RGB, it's got Bluetooth, it's got uh, a battery so you can use it you know, wirelessly. 
uh, it is 60% and the keycaps are PBT and removable and even the switches are removable so you can swap them out for some different switches later. So for about £80 in the UK that is a fantastic little keyboard. And finally for the headsets, I've got my Razer Nari headset which I like. Unfortunately it's black, I would have liked a white version which I think they've just released. But what I like about it is it's wireless because I hate having a cable sort of like cluttering up my desk when I've got a headset on and I'm pulling it around, especially when I get up from my desk and I yank it right out of the computer. Gary, my friend over here, has actually yanked a PC right off a desk when he's had a couple of beers and actually moved with his headset on. Nice work, Gary. Lies. <laughs> Lies. <laughs> Gary remembers. Right, so now I've shown you the setup. I'm going to get around the other side of the desk. We're going to start testing some of the games on this monster of a monitor. So we've run our usual couple of benchmarks at the full 1600p the Warhammer, Shadow of the Tomb Raider, and Assassin's Creed Odyssey. As you can see from these benchmarks, these are the full resolution at high or ultra settings, and we're getting sort of average frames per second here. These aren't amazing frames per second like you're gonna get on a 1080p screen, but it still looks incredible on this screen. So with this panel, I would say, as long as you're not a dedicated sort of eSports player or one in really high frames per second for CSGO or other titles, this is an amazing screen, so if you're running flight sims, driving games, strategy games, or you're, you're a casual first person shooter player, this is an amazing screen. Now you don't have to put everything on ultra, you can drop the settings down if you're not getting like over 100 frames per second, but I found with a lot of games like Apex, Reckless Racing, Dota, and a few others, they ran well over 100 frames per second at full settings at the 1600 piece, so really quite impressive. Another thing to note on Dota, a couple of people asked me, could I run the machine in clamshell mode so with the screen closed? And this isn't something that I normally do. I'll normally have the screen open and I'll have the stats and I'll have Discord on that screen. But a lot of people have asked me to run it close to see how it performs. Now in Dota, I've completed this. And as you can see, the temperatures are a lot higher. We're getting CPUs up into the 90 degrees here. And this is only on the balanced profile. But even so, because you're not getting the air being able to be taken in above the deck, it is getting hotter. But this is still running flat out with about 50 watts on CPU and 165 watts on the GPU. So it's still quite impressive. So you can do it in clamshell mode if you wish. So that leads me on to the conclusion of this video. Who would I say this monitor is for? Well, if you're looking for a fantastic monitor with great image quality for work and play, I would say this monitor could be for you. It is incredibly expensive. I managed to pick this up for £900 in the UK, which is expensive, but it retails at £1,300 if you don't use any discount codes. I wouldn't recommend it at £1,300, but at £900, I thought this was a pretty good price for this screen. If you are somebody that likes high frames per second, or if you are just a first person shooter, then I wouldn't recommend a monitor like this for you. I would recommend either the 25 or 27 inch, either 1080p or 1440p, so that you can push the frames per second much higher in your titles. But as I say, as I'm using this for work and play, I like the ultra wide aspect ratio. I think you're more immersed in the games. It's curved, so it feels like it wraps around you. And it is a lovely gaming experience. I really enjoy it. And I really like the size, 38 inches. I thought it might be too big, but I don't think there's such a thing as too big. So if you've got any questions, drop it down in the comment section down below. And as always, let me know your thoughts on this sort of setup. Do you think this is the sort of thing that you'd like? Or have you got any suggestions of where I can improve it? And as always, thank you for watching.